So I am Deb Nygaard with Arthur's Senior Care, and it is my great pleasure to host a um, good friend of mine, Beth Patterson, and I have known each other for um, 10, 15 years now. And um, so we've known each other through the se senior industry, uh, and I'm so grateful that she came to speak with us today. Um, Beth has been specializing in reverse mortgages since 1999. And she has used her expertise, knowledge, and experience to help more than a thousand seniors maintain their security, independence, dignity, and control. With her focus on customer service, her company has 100% customer satisfaction. She's an expert in her field and has been um, quoted and consulted for numerous articles. She's written books. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce Beth Patterson. Please help me give her a welcome. Thank you, Deb, and thank you to Arthur Senior Care for hosting the event um, and the video as well. And it's my pleasure to be here today, and thank you for those who are attending as well. Um, our talk is on financing your retirement, maybe right under your roof. And that's because using your home, uh, the equity in your home can help you plan your retirement. And uh, in talking previously uh, with the one gentleman, uh, I think you might have a couple surprises today about the reverse mortgage. There are several types of reverse mortgages. Uh, FHA insures one of them, and that is known as the Home Equity Conversion Mortgage. And the, um, there are some proprietary products that are not available in Minnesota right now, but hopefully they will be in the near future. The HECM was first insured in, uh, by FHA in 1989. And um, so for the purposes of this presentation, we're going to refer to reverse mortgages as the HECM program only because the proprietary is not available here. Although the proprietary programs do follow many of the um, procedures and requirements um, as the HECM does. So what is a reverse mortgage? A reverse mortgage is a mortgage that allows a homeowner 62 and older to use the equity in their home to continue to stay in their home and receive cash or create a growing line of credit. They are different from conventional mortgages um, or home equity loans in several ways. The income or credit does not impact the interest rate. The, on a conventional loan, they pull the credit report, they're looking at what your income is, what your credit score is, and that will impact your the interest rate. So if you have a lower interest score, um, or credit score, I should say, uh, you will have a higher interest rate as well as vice versa. If you have a really good score, then the interest rate could be lower. However, with the reverse mortgage, that's not true. It's going to be pretty much the one interest rate no matter what your income or credit score is. Um, another difference with the reverse mortgage and a conventional mortgage, no monthly mortgage payments are required. However, borrowers are still responsible for paying property taxes and insurance. It's a responsibility of home ownership, so you still need to pay those. But you don't have to pay the principal and interest as you do on a conventional loan. Now, you do, and I'll talk a little bit more about it um, further on, but you do have the option of making payment, it's just not required. Um, and then rather than making that payment, the uh, the, um, which reduces on a conventional loan, payments reduce the principal limit, or not the principal limit, the principal, the loan amount, whereas on a reverse mortgage, when people do not make payments, the loan balance will increase over time. And the loan is not due, it's not like a 15 or 30 year mortgage, the loan is not due until the 150th birthday of the youngest borrower. <laughs> so, so, you know, if you're, 
you know, in your 60s, 70s, or 80s, you don't have to worry about how am I ever going to pay this loan back um, in 15 or 30 years. So we really have the advantage of you are not required to pay it back. And another difference is it's a non-recourse loan, which means it is only paid back from the home value. It, uh, it cannot be paid back for, through insurance or other equity that somebody, not equity, other, um, yeah, equity, other products that um, uh, you're, from your estate. It is paid back only from the value of the home, and that, which can be a real big advantage, especially keep in mind the loan balance is going to go up. So at some point, the loan balance could exceed the value of the home. That means that if that's the case, the uh, lender is only going to be paid back from the value of the home. And an example is if your loan balance is 300000 but your home is only being valued at or sold for 200000 the lender will accept the 200000 and not come after you or your other assets from uh, from other valuables um, um, to repay this loan. Um, the reverse mortgage has various in interest rate options from monthly and annual adjustable rate as well as a fixed rate and those are going to depend on, so the interest rate is going to depend on what the program is chosen. So let's talk about those interest rates. The adjustable rate uh, often scares people, and that's because on a conventional loan, when you're making payments, if the interest rate goes up, that payment goes up. And that's where a lot of people have gotten into trouble in the past. But with the reverse mortgage, remember, you don't have to make that monthly uh, principal and interest payment, so it's not going to be impacted. Um, there, we do have a fixed rate option, uh, but it's not generally, it depends on the circumstances, but generally the fixed rate is not as advantageous on the reverse mortgage uh, as the adjustable rate. The, and that's because on the adjustable rate you have more flexibility on how you receive the funds. The borrowers can receive um, funds paid to them, quote unquote paid to them, um, th via a line of credit, a lump sum, monthly payments, or a combination of these. That program is only available with the adjustable rate options. It's not available with the fixed rate. HUD does limit how much one can take out to 60% in the first year the ba of the balance that's available to them, the loan principal limit or the loan amount available to them can only be drawn 60% the first year the balance becomes available going forward after that. The fixed rate, you have to pull all the money out in a lump sum at the time of closing the loan. So you could be, quote unquote, leaving money on the table. It, because of the, that cap of 60%. So you could only get 60% initially and not access any further funds unless you were to refinance. Um, depending on mandatory charges, which are if you have a mortgage or if you um, have uh, judgments or closing costs are considered a mandatory obligation, then additional um, funds beyond the 60% could be available. So those would have to be covered out of the loan. So let's look at the payment or um, draw plan options. A lump sum, that means you're pulling all of the available funds out at one time at closing. Monthly draws, monthly draws can be done as a tenure, T-E-N-U-R-E, not to be confused with 10 years, but tenure, meaning for the life of the loan. As long as you're in the home as the primary residence, that those payments would continue. Um, another option with the monthly draws is term. 
and term is a certain amount each month. So for example, for people on home care as an example, would be if they need an extra um, thousand dollars a month. We can set that up that they're receiving a thousand dollars a month. It would not necessarily last till their 150th birthday or to, <laughs> until they're out of the home. So, but we, that is an option. If, if people are on home care, and I have many clients who have been on home care, and they just need that extra money, and it may only be for a few years, but that's all they need. So that gives a lot of uh, flexibility. The, and again, it's only available with the adjustable rate. Another option is the line of credit. And the line of credit, unlike any other line of credit, like on a, a home equity conversion mortgage, a more of a conventional type of loan, the line of credit grows. So more money becomes available into the future. And that is a huge advantage, especially when one is looking at plant, using the reverse mortgage to plan for retirement. And I'll show some examples of that a little later on. You can also do a combination of these. So for example, I had a couple, they needed a couple thousand dollars initially, and they wanted $300 each month to supplement their income just to kind of improve their cash flow. And then they left the rest that was available to them in a line of credit. Um, so that went great for a number of years until he passed away and her income changed because she no longer now was receiving the two incomes. She was down to the one social security income. So they, at that point, we adjusted the reverse mortgage, and it can be done, um, to changing the payment plan so that she was supplementing the Social Security that was no longer coming in from him. Uh, so that, that is an option. There is a one-time charge of $20 administrative to make that adjustment. And to be clear, when you're drawing funds from a line of credit, there is no charges, additional charges to, to implement those, but just need to be aware of that. But that, that gives it a lot of flexibility as well. Um, another example is Dorothy. Uh, Dorothy took out a reverse mortgage 13 years ago. And she had a home value of about 230000 She took a lump sum uh, for some immediate needs. She set up $200 on a 10-year plan. Uh, and she left the rest in the line of credit. 13 years later, she was, I believe, in her 70s at the time. Do the math backwards, but she is now 91 years old. Oh. She's still receiving that $200 a month and will. She keeps saying she's going to live to 150. She's going to be that one person. <laughs> and I have heard that the person who lives to be 150 is on earth right now. So we don't know who that is, but <laughs> that could be a possibility. But anyway, she thinks it's going to be her. Mm -hmm. um, so that $200 will continue as long as she's living in the home as her primary residence. Now, if she moves out, the loan becomes due and that will stop. But, and then she left the rest in the line of credit. And she's used the funds in the line of credit to uh, do some repairs on the home. She's used it for traveling. Last summer, she drove across the country by herself to visit family on the East Coast. So she's still very uh, vibrant and able to do this, and why not take advantage of it? Um, so she's, but she is using the funds wisely, slowly, so she didn't just pull them all out at once. Um, so she would have funds for in the future as well. Um, and if she needs home care in the future, the funds that in the line of credit, um, she could still access those. And um, I'll go into this a little bit more as well, that if one is on elderly waiver or medical assistance programs on Medicaid here in Minnesota, 
they can still receive the reverse mortgage. So it can work in conjunction. And speaking of that, here's um, my slide on doing the uh, reverse mortgage and the impact it has on medical assistance, Medicaid, if it's the national program, but here in Minnesota it's called medical assistance. It is, the reverse mortgage is a loan against the property, so it's not considered income or an asset because you've got the funds available to you, but it's not necessarily um, income. Now, you can take the money out. You would need to spend it in the month that you receive it in order to stay on your medical assistance. So, for example, I have um, had a borrower that we did the reverse mortgage. She was on medical assistance. They were installing a bathroom on the first floor of her home because she could no longer go up and down the stairs but wanted to stay in the home. So they pulled, initially pulled $10,000 out for the bathroom to do it. However, with, in a month, it was taking longer than that month. So they had given the contractors $5,000. They paid the reverse mortgage back $5,000. Then when the bathroom was complete, they pulled that money back out to pay the contractor. So that is an advantage where you can pay into the reverse mortgage um, and you're not limited on how much you pay or that. But that meant she could still continue on her medical assistance. Um, if the funds are pulled out and put in a checking account, savings account, left as cash under the mattress, yes, some people still do that. I don't want to know, but <laughs> they, they are still supposed to be reporting that as an asset when they're on medical assistance. But if you do that and you don't spend it, it could impact your receiving the assistance in the future. So the important thing is you spend it the month you receive it, and then you're fine. Or if you're not spending it, then you pay the money back. Um, and that is uh, Minnesota law allows it, but I also believe that's federally allowable that you have to spend the money you receive, but you can still pull out funds. What if you're not on the medical assistance? Pardon me? If you're not on medical assistance, do you have to still have to spend it that month? No. OK, you no. have the time. Correct. You, if you're not on medical assistance, then you do not have, you're not restricted to spending it in the month. That's only when you are on medical assistance. So, and that brings up a good point too. There's no restrictions on how you spend the money, what you spend it on, how much you pull out, up to the cap that's available to you. Um, and yes, you can leave it in your savings account or um, checking account or whatever. Uh, one word of caution if you're doing that is interest will be accruing on the loan on funds that you've pulled out. So, and because you're not making payments, the loan balance again is growing. Essentially, you're borrowing additional funds each month with the interest in the mortgage insurance premium that because it's FHA insured, there's a mortgage insurance premium. So, the loan balance will grow. But if so, you pull it out and you have it in your account, something happens and you're going to be going on medical assistance, you can pay it back into the loan. But otherwise, there's no restrictions. You can spend it on whatever, however. But as part of a plan, you probably want to be cautious about gifting it um, because there is a five year look back rule if something were to happen into the future. So, just another little word of caution. Now, we do not have the same qualifications on a conventional loan with the reverse mortgage where we look totally at your income and your assets to see if you're going to qualify. It's much easier to qualify for the reverse mortgage. However, we do a financial assessment to assure that it's sustainable that you will be able to stay in the home, pay property taxes and insurance going forward. That had been one of the biggest issues with the reverse mortgage. You know, the headlines that say 
senior lost a home because of a reverse mortgage. Who hasn't seen those? Well, really, they weren't losing the home because of the reverse mortgage. They were losing their home because they didn't pay their property taxes. Mm -hmm. And guess what? You don't pay your property taxes, the county's going to come after you, and you'll lose your home. So, but it made the headlines in that way, and so that's why um, we set up the financial assessment to make sure it's viable for you as well as the product. So we look at, we do look at, we pull a credit report, we do look at your income versus your debt. And if um, you haven't had late payments or everything is fine, then you just qualify. If you have had circumstances where you have a lot of debt and um, you have been late on some of your payments, if there's an extenuating circumstance such as hospitalization, a death in the family, and that we can explain why there was late payments, then um, that's okay too. But if we have a lot of late payments, that doesn't mean you can't qualify. You could still qualify. What we would do is set up what's called a life expectancy set aside, or LISA for short. And what that means is we're going to set money aside to pay property taxes and insurance on your behalf. So instead of you writing the check out when it's due, the servicer is going to write the checks out. So that's still, you can still qualify, still can be a big benefit for people because those are homeowner responsibilities, they have to be paid. So that in looking at the big picture, you could still qualify. We just are paying those on behalf of people. Um, and again, that can still be a good thing if that is required. Uh, some people can choose actually to have it done rather than um, just having it determined by us. Something else to talk about is non-borrowing spouses. Non-borrowing spouse is somebody who is not 62. Um, there could be a variety of reasons why, or they may not live in the home, um, but there are some protections for a spouse that is not 62 at the time of closing. And they have to be eligible uh, at the time of the death of the borrower but they could still possibly remain in the home if they're meeting the requirements, remain in the home and um, to, until they are no longer able to stay in the home. A couple things to note is that if the non-borrowing spouse, as a non-borrowing spouse, they're not a borrower, they would not have access to funds in the line of credit monthly payments. They could still stay but they don't have access to those funds. And if we had done a lease of the life expectancy set aside, that would stop also. They would have to pay property taxes on their own. There's some um, uh, requirements to be able to qualify for that that I'm not going to go into, uh, but it's something to keep in mind that non-borrowing spouses can still um, somebody that does have a younger spouse can still do the reverse mortgage down to the age of 18 is the calculations mm -hmm. now when we are determining how much we're loaning we use the age of the youngest borrower or non-borrowing spouse um, the value of the home the appraised value of the home um, or FHA's lending limit and the expected interest rate. The expected interest rate is used to determine how much is available and for our calculations, not necessarily the same as the interest rate that's on the loan. Right now it's based on the LIBOR, London Interbank Offered Rate. And um, so the, we're looking at the 10-year LIBOR for the expected interest rate, either monthly or annual for the actual interest rate. Do I have everybody confused on interest rates? Because they do get people confused. <laughs> and I understand that. Um, but just 
those are some basics to know about the reverse mortgage and that. Um, and again, to remind you that the interest rate does not matter what your income or if, if you file bankruptcy, that's not going to impact qualifying for the loan. Um, we can still qualify you under circum. You still have to meet the financial assessment, but we can still qualify you um, under certain circumstances. So let's talk about using the reverse mortgage in financial and estate planning. And this is um, becoming more recognized and more talked about. It used to be looked at the reverse mortgage was for um, immediate or cash poor. That when I first got in the industry 20 years ago, it was kind of known as the loan of last resort or use your home uh, when you're cash poor. And that's not the case. It, it never was HUD's intention, but that's how it got perceived. So now, um, financial advisors are embracing using the reverse mortgage as a tool in the financial plan. And this, um, taking it out earlier, and we'll go into more details like that, about that, but taking it out earlier means that you could have funds for when life happens. Um, so a um, couple names of advisors who are doing some teaching. Wade Fow is a professor at the American College. Um, and he, Jamie Hopkins, co-director at the American College uh, New York Life Center for Retirement and Income Planning. Wade Fow actually has a book on using the reverse mortgage for financial planning. And um, so he, they're, they're the ones who are trying to get the word out that this is okay and should be part of the plan. Um, one way that it can be used in your retirement plan is using the um, reverse mortgage or HECM for purchasing a new home. It's called HECM for purchase. So if people want to downsize, move to a town home and not have to do the yard work, move to a one level home, move closer to the children, buy a dream home, we can use the reverse mortgage to help them do that without having monthly payments. And that's one of the common questions I get. Well, why use a reverse mortgage instead of a conventional loan? Well, remember the reverse mortgage doesn't have monthly payments required. So you can um, use the reverse mortgage and have a better cash flow. Uh, now, there still have to pay property taxes and insurance, and we have to clarify that because that has been often misunderstood statement as well. A um, couple examples, Mike and Carol um, wanted to move because she was, they were in a two-story home and she was having trouble going up and down stairs. And so they found a townhome, not too far from where they were, and um, that gave them the flexibility with everything on one level. And um, so they bought that home, used the reverse mortgage to do so. They're thrilled. I just, um, actually they gave me a referral and I was talking um, to them not too long ago and they're doing very well. Her health with her knees have, has deteriorated some. Uh, but so this is ideal for them. And Ray and Linda had a split level home and for doing their future planning for health issues into the future, they found their dream home, as they call it, without the stairs. And they used the funds from the current home they sold, used those funds plus the reverse mortgage funds proceeds that's available to them, and the adjustable rate reverse mortgage to buy a home. They sold their home for um, $225 and they bought a new home for $325.
because the reverse mortgage allowed them to have that extra money to buy their dream home. And I'm working with somebody else right now that's also in a similar situation. They're in a very large home in St. Paul, too big for them. And so they're moving to a town home. Don't have to take care of the yard work and all of that type of thing. There's, they're buying, um, the home they're buying is also higher than the, what they're selling their current home for. So it's allowing them to buy more than what just the paying cash from the sale of their current home. So that's um, a way that it can be used. Now it has to be a primary residence. The reverse mortgage has to be on the primary residence. So we can't use it to, or have you use it to buy a cabin or because it can't be on the cabin. <laughs> uh, but you can do the reverse mortgage on your current home and take those proceeds out to buy that cabin. So there, there's still a way of doing it, but um, it's the reverse mortgage would not be on the property with the cabin unless you move there and made that your primary residence. Another use of the reverse mortgage and planning is protecting other investments and retirement portfolios. So with the reverse mortgage in place, cash is available, uh, and you've got your uh, retirement funds. The market goes down. You don't want to pull your funds out when the market's down. You want to leave them in there. So if you use the reverse mortgage when the market is down, you can still protect those other assets. Um, and still have the investments. And um, sometimes those investments are what is used for the inheritance, while the reverse mortgage, the equity in the home, gives you the freedom to have that extra cash flow. Now, when I first started in the industry, I often heard children saying, oh no, don't want you to do that reverse mortgage, mom. I want the house. Now I'm hearing children say, Mom, you need to do the reverse mortgage. It's okay, I'm fine. And Mom's saying, but wait, I want to leave you the house. Well, you can still leave the home to your children. Uh, that, there's no restrictions. It's however you have it in the will. Because I, want, I guess this is a good point to clarify. Title is still in your name. Just like any other mortgage. Title is still in your name. The bank does not own the home. That's a big misconception that we often hear. So you, you're going to write up your will and draft it however you want, whoever you want the home to go to. You will be using the equity in the home for your needs. But the kids, generally, they're doing OK. Um, I met with a couple not too long ago, and they're like, my kids are making more money, and they have more money than I do. They don't need my money. <laughs> so, But even if your kids maybe need some help, you can do that while they're still alive versus just worrying about leaving an inheritance after you're gone. I look at um, the time that I spent with my parents as more valuable than the money I received after they passed away. Uh, think about taking the kids on the trip or even taking a, the grandkids to the zoo. You can afford to buy that little extra um, gift for them or something. Those, creating those memories are more important than just leaving an inheritance. I had a gentleman, um, I, I changed names um, to protect the privacy of people. So I made it, I'm making up the names, but anyway. Um, so Bob did the reverse mortgage. He was referred to me from a financial planner. His wife had died recently. And he, um, he needed, because cash flow had changed with the loss of the income from the Social Security, so he, he did the reverse mortgage. His sister-in-law initially said, oh, move into subsidized housing. Well, he had a dog, and everybody doesn't necessarily qualify for subsidized housing. 
he wanted to stay in his house. So he did the reverse mortgage. He called me, I don't know, a few months later, and he had taken, he didn't have children of his own, he had taken a nephew on a trip to Yellowstone. He had always mm -hmm. dreamed of going to Yellowstone. So he took the nephew to Yellowstone, thrilled, had a wonderful time, they both did. And he called me afterwards to tell me about this, and he also said, you won't recognize my home. I had it all adapted with wider doors to, to be prepared for when I might be in a wheelchair and uh, adapted so he could age in place. And a few years later, he did pass away, and his niece called me to say he had passed away. And I said, oh, I remember him and his story to Yellowstone. She said, oh, he took secrets to his grave, and I'm sure my nephew is taking secrets to his <laughs> grave as well. So we don't know what happened on that trip, but they had a great time. But those are the memories to create. What better than to just worry about leaving money to a child or that? She also shared, the niece also shared with me that he was able to take the different nieces and nephews' families to um, see plays. And for them, I don't remember if it was Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, whatever, but the kid, he took them. And he, she said she looked out at him and the expression on his face, the passion, the caring, and the pride that he had in watching the little ones get so excited about seeing the play. So that, those are the rewards and he she also said that somebody else in the family couldn't afford a vacuum cleaner so he bought them a vacuum cleaner with his funds those are the values of what it can do for you so um protecting other investments i'm going to come back to that and share the story of daryl he um had been regularly drawing from his retirement funds for his living expenses doing the reverse mortgage. Now he doesn't have to do that. He's using the equity from the home, leaving the retirement funds for where they're going. And um, he is continuing um, and he, drawing those funds. He was having to pay taxes on them and penalties. So using the reverse mortgage saved that money along that line. And he did his set the money up as a tenure, the receiving monthly payments every month as long as he's living in the home as his primary residence, and the line of credit so he would have funds uh, for in the future. And I talked to Daryl pretty regularly. Um, so it's kind of fun to hear from, I love hearing from my clients and the stories and how they're doing. Um, but I'm also help with answering questions after the loan is done, but um, they become, friends to me in some cases too. So another way of using the reverse mortgage as part of the plan or retirement planning, eliminating a mortgage payment. So if you have a home with the current mortgage on it and you're having to pay out $500, $1,000, whatever your monthly payment is, you can do the reverse mortgage and eliminate the paying principal and interest. And that's going to improve your cash flow. If you're young enough and still working and able to make those payments, you can make a payment into the reverse mortgage. What that's going to do is lower your loan balance and increase the line of credit. So when, every time you make a payment in, if you pay $1,000 in, your loan balance, like on a conventional mortgage, will go down but it will go into the line of credit and be available in the future without having to do uh, refinance and pay closing costs again. So, and the, remember the line of credit grows, so more money can become available into the future. And if you're making, able to make payments, it offers a lot of flexibility um, for the retirement planning portion of it. Um, Yvette used the reverse mortgage to pay off her conventional mortgage and eliminate the monthly principal and interest, saying it has made a big difference in the quality of my life to have that additional money every month. Um, and payment flexibility, 
You can make payments when you choose. You can choose how much you want to pay. You can choose not to pay at all. So, for example, if you are, made, are able to make payments, but you want to go on a vacation, you don't have to make a payment. Or if health circumstance happens, you don't have to, how do I, do I make my mortgage payment? Do I pay my medical bills? You don't have to balance that. You don't have to make the payment. If life changes again and you're able to make payments, you can do so. You're, you're in control. You've got all of that flexibility uh, to do that. And for a lot, the long um, term uh, care needs, whatever. Um, So, and if you're making the payments again, the funds are going to go into the line of credit, and the line of credit will grow, so the um, more funds will be available in the future. So let's look at um, an example here, uh, and it, there's a slide, uh, and we're on slide 15, uh, using for long-term care. So. In this example, one is 63 years old, home value 200,000, available uh, principal limit after closing is 77,988. If you wait 10 years and the home value has appreciated and gone up, and um, the, and I'm using from uh, Moody's analytics analytics 263,000 so the home is appreciated to 263 available at that point depending on interest rate and factors then but in my example here would be 118,850 now if the interest rate is higher less funds are going to be available into the future so we don't know what that would be but this is just for the example so looking at the future of the person, 63, $200,000 home, available um, initially, or in the line of credit, 77,988, not taking any draws out. They're just leaving that money in that line of credit. 10 years from now, at age, um, or I guess in my example, I have five years from now, at age 67, they would have 100000 in their line of credit. 10 years, age 72, 73, they would have approximately, um, I have to read the fine print, 129000 10 years from now. So we remember we started out with 77988 10 years from now they would have um, almost 100 uh, or 129,000. At age 83, when, uh, 20 years later, they would have 236,000. So if you leave the money, take the reverse mortgage out early, leave the money in there for um, 10, 20 years when you might be needing some services long-term care, you would have that much more money available to you uh, to draw. And so if we look at 10 years from now, you don't do the reverse mortgage now, you wait until you're 73 to do it. Uh, that would make a difference at age 83 instead of the 236 that you would have received at age 63, you'd only have 112, 113,000. And again, since we don't know what those factors are going to be, that's why it's sometimes wiser to do it ahead of time and just let it um, grow. Um, and even if they uh, pull out and receive funds every year over the 10, 20 years, if they pull a couple thousand dollars out, they're probably going to have about the same amount as they would if they waited, but they would have received all of that additional funds every year. Make sense? I know I can get a little overwhelming numbers. Um, okay, paying for care, home care. Um, 
Using the reverse mortgage is and has been very common for paying for home care. It helps people stay in the home just a little bit longer. So whether you've done the reverse mortgage previously or you're in, um, now looking at it because you want to fund and pay for home care, um, it's a good option either way. And I have story after story of people who have used the reverse mortgage just to be able to stay in their home and uh, where they want to, uh, you know, maybe it's only for a couple of years because it cost, they were using more of the equity to pay for that home care service. Um, but it still fulfilled their dream of being able to stay in the home. Um, another way of looking at paying for care in the situation where there's a couple and they're in the home and one of them needs to move to memory care, the one in the home you can do the reverse mortgage as long as one person is still in the home. So do the reverse mortgage and use those funds to pay for the care of the other one. An example would be uh, with Arthur Senior Care somebody's in the home, use the reverse mortgage to pay for care at one of the residential homes or group homes of Arthur Senior Care. And the advantage of that, generally, um, it's private pay, if I understand it right. Um, so that allows you to um, be able to afford um, moving and still, but keep in mind, the. Um, Home has to be the primary residence of at least one person. But that has been used. We have done them with those circumstances. Um, on the next one, we're going to look at uh, the slide. Continue working and having funds when you're not able to do so. So as I've shared, uh, the line of credit could mean more funds become available in the future because of the growth rate. And I want to clarify, it's not interest because the line of credit is not your money. So uh, a lot of times it's confused, but it's actually just a growth rate that means more money becomes available into the future. So as I also had mentioned previously, borrowers can continue working, and but when they can't work anymore or choose not to, they could use and tap into the reverse mortgage to replace that cap, uh, income and um, improve their cash flow. So in this example, we've got um, age 62, home value 200000 They paid off a $50,000 mortgage. So their starting line of credit is $22,183. If they make a payment in at $600 a month for nine years or until they're age 70, uh, they, um, their, their, their line of credit is going to grow. At age 83, their line of credit would be 237000 with a loan balance of about $28,000, $29,000. So the blue line on, or the top line on this chart is showing the home value increasing at 4%. The middle line or green line is showing the line of credit growing. And then the um, red line at the bottom is the loan balance decreasing because you're making payments in. So the, lo the loan balance will decrease, but the line of credit is going to go up and more money will become available into the future. And just so you know, I do have a program that I can do these scenarios and analogies and uh, kind of play and see what would happen. Um, but in this circumstance, so if they're paying in for several years and then they stop working and stop making those payments, they could change to have the payments paid to them at that point or just continue letting the line of credit grow. And as we said in the example, they could have over 200000 available to them when they're 83. And that could be when they need some additional funds. Another example is 
not depending on children. So um, a lot of times children are paying for home care or long-term care, medical expenses, helping their parents out in various ways. And that can really have an impact on the child. So think about your children are um, working, they have children of their own, they, they may come up and have health issues or lose a job. Their financial situation could change where they can no longer help you anymore. And so doing the reverse mortgage can help you um, have the money um, and not depend on the children, but let the children also live their life and um, take care of what they need to with their family as well. And that really is a big relief for everybody involved. Long-term care insurance. Um, and that was talked a little bit about in previous presentations today. The reverse mortgage, if you have a long-term care insurance policy, can, or if you're purchasing one, um, it can allow a longer term deductible or waiting period, or I should say higher deductible or uh, longer waiting period. So the reverse mortgage, you have the funds in the line of credit available to you, and um, the waiting period, you could use the reverse mortgage proceeds to cover what you need in that waiting period. So you could actually have a longer waiting period that would reduce the cost of the long-term care insurance policy. Um, or the reverse mortgage can pay for things that's not covered under the long-term care policy. Um, if you don't qualify for a long-term care policy, that's another big uh, factor and the reverse mortgage can help with that as well. And let's look at the cost of long-term care uh, insurance to the reverse mortgage. And I found this to be a real eye-opener and I was like, is this really true when I was putting the slides together? So age 63, home value 450000 Closing cost on the reverse mortgage would be $17,500. And the principal limit or maximum loan amount, $184,000. And a line of credit of $166,550. So 15 years later, the line of credit will have grown to $370,376 with a loan balance of $38,919. Now, the loan balance is going to grow, again, because interest is being added on to the loan. The FHA mortgage insurance premium is being added on to the loan balance. Um, so the loan balance will be higher. But this example versus long-term care insurance, $8,000 annual premium. Over 15 years, that's $120,000 that you will have paid for a $300,000 benefit versus with the reverse mortgage, the loan balance or closing cost, or not just closing cost, but cost of the reverse mortgage, $38,919 or $39,000 compared to having line of credit available at $370,000. So the reverse mortgage is really a lot less expensive than long-term care insurance. And keep in mind, there's no restrictions on how you spend the money with the reverse mortgage. So you're not limited to, oh, are you gonna qualify for the daily limit, uh, a day, day activities of daily living? We don't look at any of that because we don't care. <laughs> um, so that that's um, another example and something to keep in mind for doing the reverse mortgage in a retirement plan. Um, another example is paying off a spouse in a divorce. So if the couple is divorcing, and yes, there are many people that are older that do go through divorces, 
Um, one spouse can remain in the home, do the reverse mortgage, and pay off the other spouse so they can remain in the home. The other spouse could also use a reverse mortgage to purchase the home, uh, their new home. So that's another example um, of using the reverse mortgage. One other one is using in probate. The death of the parent, one person, one of the children wants to keep the home, the reverse mortgage can be done by the person who wants to keep the home and that could provide them the funds to pay off their siblings. Um, I had a, a borrower, Betty, she had lived with her mother providing the care for her mother. Mother passed away, Betty wanted to stay in the home. So we, she did the reverse mortgage so that she had the money to pay off her other two siblings. And it worked well so that Betty could stay in the home. And, um, and the siblings still got their share of the estate. Um, another one is just using for future planning. Bob and Sarah were both on their second marriages. The house had been in Bob's name. We added at the closing, Sarah's name was added to the title. They did the reverse mortgage to um, have funds for what they might need now, creating that line of credit so it grows, and for potential needs into the future. Now, they're setting up legal documents to allow Sarah to remain in the home after he passes away, but yet still have the uh, money to go to his heirs based on how they, the house was his initially, and he wanted to make sure he was funding um, some grandchildren's education or whatever he wanted for his children. So the reverse mortgage allow, is allowing them to um, do that, fulfill that need, but it, that's where we work in conjunction with uh, uh, attorneys and financial advisors to make sure that plan is in place and in a good, position for them. Um, they set up a trust so that the son is uh, the trustee and he would have control so down the line after Bob has passed away Sarah couldn't change those plans and keep the money. Um, so there's some protections but that's where the legal um, working with the legal attorneys and um, financial advisors come into place. Now, one thing I have not talked about, but it's often a big discussion, is closing costs. Almost everybody says closing costs are high. Well, have you ever looked at the closing cost on a conventional loan? Guess what? They compare. The difference is the FHA mortgage insurance premium, and because there's a lot of advantages of the FHA insuring the loan, the, um, you do pay a mortgage insurance premium. But the um, conventional loan, generally when we're applying for a conventional loan, we're, we're asking what's my payment, what's my interest rate. We're not looking at the closing cost. So I've had people come to the closing, their kids just refinanced, and they bring their uh, closing statement to the uh, closing table, and what, they're like, whoa, these are the same cost. They're the same, they compare. But we always hear reverse mortgages, closing costs are high, because we don't look at the actual details on the other. And because of so many benefits that come with a reverse mortgage, line of credit growing. Um, it's guaranteed to be there for you as long as you're living in the home as your primary residence, abiding by the terms of the loan, paying property taxes and insurance, for example, then the loan is guaranteed to be there for you. So, and even if something happens to the lender, it's insured by HUD, doesn't go away. So there's a lot of protections with the FHA insuring the loan. Um, and so, Closing cost high compared to what? Got to look at the benefits. So, um, thank you.
Uh, I do have our, our website is a very educational website, not just a selling website. I did write a book, Understanding Reverse Mortgages, Financing for Seniors may be right under your roof. And um, I do provide uh, free, no obligation, and to help run scenarios and that if you're interested. And um, I think, are we about out of time for timing, or do we have time for a question or two? You can ask questions, yeah. Okay. okay. Are there any questions? So I'm in a house, there's no mortgage. Okay. I have transfer on death for my children. Mm -hmm. Can the reverse mortgage slow down even though it's set up like that? Good question. So you're in a home and you don't have a mortgage and you have a transfer on death deed. Yes, the reverse mortgage can be done. It means that you, not having a mortgage means that you would be, um, uh, more funds would be available than if we had to pay off a mortgage and we can do the reverse mortgage with a transfer on death deed, life estate, or even a trust. So uh, we can do that. Um, and just to clarify, you don't have a mortgage, but if we're paying off a mortgage that somebody has, cash flow is still going to improve because you don't have to make that payment of $500 or $1,000 a month. So making, uh, doing the reverse mortgage and eliminating that payment can still improve cash flow. But you would, without having a mortgage, more funds would be available initially. So oh, then I don't need to pay the reverse mortgage interest or anything like that? So you do slow. not. Okay. Yeah, you, you do not have to make any payments on the reverse mortgage. You just have to pay property taxes and insurance, HOA, if it's your enough. So no, when the part. settlement comes, the bank would then have a house sale. First lien on the house would be to pay back the a reverse mortgage to the bank. And then the heirs would be have the remaining value of that house, the difference. Correct. So when the loan is due and payable, you're no longer in the home as your primary residence, the reverse mortgage gets paid back first from the sale of the home, and um, any remaining equity would go to your heirs, however you have it set up. The nice thing is, if it's the loan balance is higher than what the home could be sold for, think back to 2008, 2009, housing crash, and uh, home values dropped. Borrowers at that time did not have to come up with that difference. They paid, if, if they were moving out of the home, they could still stay in the home, that didn't matter. But an example, one of my borrowers passed away and the um, home value, uh, the loan balance was around 200,000 and the home was only worth around 150,000 at that point. She or the heirs didn't have to come up with the difference. But it's a win-win either way because the heirs, if there is remaining equity, the heirs do get that money. It's distributed however you want. Maybe I still don't quite understand why reverse mortgage. Like in her case, if she doesn't have to pay mortgage, what was she looking for? Some cash flow? Yes. Or a line of credit in case she needed? Right. Yes, yeah, so to repeat the question is you're, you're still a little confused why doing the reverse mortgage. Um, generally it is to improve a cash flow, have funds for in the future if you happen to need it, um, use for whatever you want. Um, so to produce funds in the future, go through this, uh, setting up your house as a reverse mortgage, pay the necessary equity, I mean the necessary closing costs. Mm -hmm. But let's say you never use the, have no intentions on using the uh, equity in the, or the line of credit for many years, is there a cost just to keep the account open? No. The interest and FHA mortgage insurance premium is gonna be being added on to the loan balance. So yes, there's a cost to the loan, 
but on a conventional loan, you're making the payments to pay those down. On the reverse mortgage, because you're not required to make the payments, it's going to be added on. So essentially, you're borrowing a little more every month. In what you call but, these fees, we'll just use the word fees, mm -hmm. too. Not that you used any money to yourself. The, the, the fees are still accumulated. Yes, the fees are going to accumulate. But you're able to access and have funds for in the future. The loan, but then the loan balance when you're no longer, if you didn't pull any money out of the line of credit, that what you're paying back is only those fees. To the bank when you make a final settlement on the house. You're right to the bank with the when you're selling, the bank will be paid back. Then how how come people can draw two hundred dollars each month? So you add on the loan balance then, right? So, <laughs> don't feel bad, it's confusing. <laughs> I didn't come from a banking background, real estate, mortgage uh, bank. I had general math in high school, so I understand <laughs> it's, it can be confusing. Um, but be, because the funds are being made available to you, so you can draw when and if you mm -hmm. need to, mm -hmm. um, rather than taking it out in a lump sum. Okay. On a conventional loan, it's almost always a lump sum. Mm -hmm. There is a home equity line of credit mm -hmm. offered through banks, and those um, you have a line of credit. It doesn't grow, um, and they're usually only good for 10 or 15 years. So, are we that about our time, so, I think? Oh, one oh, more thing. Okay, one more to question. Make myself clear. In her case, if she still have a mortgage to pay, and then she do the reverse mortgage, mm -hmm. then who is paying her home mortgage loan? Good question. So, if somebody has a mortgage uh -huh. on their home uh -huh. currently, Who's going to pay that? That has to be paid off with their reverse mortgage initially. Okay. So at closing, whatever that balance is, oh, is paid off. So it's at on your loan. So that becomes part of your uh, reverse mortgage initial loan. Balance. balance. Loan balance, yes. We don't call it loan, but it's a bad it is, because it is, you have the house for it, it is a loan, <laughs> and we want to make sure that okay. people do understand it. Okay. It is a loan. Okay. And, okay. yeah. Okay. Because sometimes people think it's not a loan, but it really is so a loan. So you won't settle until the house is sold, then, or you die, or the... The Until the home is no longer your yours. primary residence. Okay. So the loan becomes due when mm -hmm. the home is no longer your primary residence okay. or your 150th birthday. In case sure. you're going to live as long as Dorothy plans to. But yeah. Okay. Now so I and so the, that, the advantage of that is that you're not at the age uh, or, you know, mm -hmm. you take out a reverse mortgage when you're 70s and it's for 30 years, well, how are you ever going to pay that back? Or not a reverse mortgage, a conventional mortgage. How are you ever going to pay it back? That's a big advantage of the reverse mortgage. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Well, thank you, Beth. We appreciate you coming um, and, and save for us. So yeah. Let's give her a little.